I first met her at DEFCO. She was a young development officer at the, at, 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 the, at the office. And all of a sudden, this gal attacks me, tells me who she is and what she's going to do and how she's going to conquer the world. And I'm saying, whew, what a powerhouse. I first met Annette in a very funny situation in the sense that I had um, recently taken on this role at GE and I was going to an association, the Canadian Council of Chief Executives meeting, and I went walking into the room and Annette came running up to me and said, thank heavens we've doubled the number of women in the group. <laughs> and Annette had been one of the first champions, um, champion women at the Canadian Council of Chief Executives and warmly welcomed me when I came on and increased uh, the numbers by 100%. <laughs> One day this charming young woman came into the boardroom and made a presentation. I said, by God, this woman's good. I could just see this girl was very intelligent and was going to go far. And that was a pistol. And, uh, and it was obvious to all of us that, uh, that she, was, she was a comer, that, uh, that she had a great future in front of her. Uh, you could just tell she had that irrepressible optimism, you know, that sunny disposition, smile on her face, but you knew you were in the presence of dynamite. I think there are a couple of things that uh, characterize Annette's uh, success. First is her strength of character. Uh, and that probably comes from her upbringing, her family back in Nova Scotia and Cape Breton. Second is uh, just, you know, she's never satisfied. She's always trying to make things a little better. She's willing to take a risk. And uh, she has tremendous uh, success rallying her team around that. In life in general with Annette, um, I don't think there's ever a time that she, um, she never says, I think I can do it. Uh, she'd always be the one to say, I know I can do it, or I, I will do it. She also is, um, is a great lover of our country. She's a patriot and a great Canadian. And more than happy when I've asked her to help, more than once um, she's helped. And she helped in one of the most important times, the Economic Advisory Council during the crisis in 2008, 2009. She pitched in and that, that group of 11 people made a difference in this country. She's classic Maritimer, straight shooting. And, uh, and you, you always know what you're going to get from her. You might not like it, but you're going to get the truth, and you know where you stand. We ended up on a, on a uh, committee called Visions for Cape Breton, and both of us being first generation, both of us being fairly competitive, we were at each other. And I must have uh, frustrated her more than usual at one time. And finally she said to me, Look, Irving, I'm smarter than you are. I'm better looking at you than you are. I work harder than you, are, than you do. But I said, you can't run a five-chain cha furniture store. So what does she do? She goes and she runs this huge conglomerate just to prove a point, I think. She's never tried to shy away from where she's come from and the great life she's had there. And I think it has made her such a wonderful person today because she's held on to those roots and more importantly the values that she brought up with. She's the, uh, the daughter of immigrants to Canada, a hard-working farm family, humble beginnings, uh, but just the perfect background for success. All the kids were in 4-H obviously and North Sydney had uh, an exhibition so um, they always had cow milking contests where you, everybody gets a a cup has a you have a partner and one person has to milk and one person has to hold the cup so she was the milker and uh, she was always she was a champion she she was able to fill that cup the first and and send the other fella on his way to to drink it down so she I, actually I think she got the good end of the stick anyway one time I remember she was asked to do a 25 year projection on the price of coal and on the price of oil and um, she started working on that, and I said, Annette, how can you predict the price of oil and the price of coal 25 years out? That's a crazy assignment. I said, what price you got oil at, at, at this moment? Well, she said, I've jacked it up till it's $100 a barrel. I said, $100 a barrel? Are you out of your mind? You're never gonna have oil at $100 a barrel. Once again, she proved me wrong. 
Her emotion, what I call emotional intelligence, uh, ability to relate to other people, ability to listen, ability to emote with other people, and to, uh, that's the, today's age, that distinguishes leaders. When she interacts with her own team, you can see that she's not someone who's afraid to get her hands dirty. She gets in there, works with them, gets them excited on the project, and truly leads in what we call the inverted pyramid, which is the bosses at the bottom and helping everybody do their job better. She has done a wonderful job of leading, leading the way and blazing the trail for women because she's done it in a way that has not been offensive to others, but it's gotten the job done. Well, junior Achievement's all about um, getting ahead and, and entrepreneurial activity, and she epitomizes that in, in Canada. All of us recognize how Annette for us really symbolizes Canada and the success of our business in Canada and in particular in Nova Scotia. She is one of our greatest exports uh, from Atlanta, Canada, and we're all really, really proud of Annette and what she's accomplished. She's got the world as her oyster. She can do what she wants. With all the success, she's kept the, the same values that I saw in her as a young entrepreneur, a young woman starting out. I just can't tell you how much I love her. But she's been um, just one of the best sisters anybody could have. And we're really um, are proud that she's able to um, um, acquire uh, awards like this and, and her success has just been phenomenal.